So I've been having so much fun filming these car videos and I've really enjoyed sharing it with you, but I've received so many comments asking me how I film these videos. So to answer that question, here are five tips that I picked up along the way to help you guys film these videos in the smoothest and actually the most efficient way possible because I don't want to be filming, I want to be editing. But firstly, let's get some things out the way. I've shot all these videos with the Sony A7C and the mix between my Tamron 17 to 28 F2.8 and the Viltrox 24 millimeter. 1.8. For dry shots, I used the Mavic Mini 2. Fun fact, on the first McLaren shoot, I forgot my SD card, so everything was recorded at 720p directly onto my phone. So I had to do some crazy sharpening and post-processing. The gimbal I use is the Zion Weeble S. I shoot my videos at 1080p at 50 frames per second, which allows me to slow things down if I want to. If it's very bright, I use this ND filter, and I recommend that you always use a polarizer. Otherwise, smile, because you're going to be on camera. Smile. The first tip that I'll share is to get things smooth in camera. Although we're shooting on a gimbal at 50 FPS, 60 FPS, it's important to make your movement steady in camera. Otherwise, you're going to be struggling to stabilize each shot later and your speed ramps will look all shaky and messy. Don't be afraid to slow your movements down by moving slower and taking your time with the movements. That being said, these machines aren't perfect. So I always end up adding warp stabilizer at something like 5% to get rid of minor jitters and wobble. Which goes into my next tip, shoot with FPV or POV mode, simply because it allows you to change your horizon, making your shots look a little bit more dynamic. When you're following the side of a car, if you just add a little bit of a tilt, it just makes it look so cool. For example here, I started off at an angle and then straightened up as I got to the steering wheel. You can obviously do this in post, but that means you have to shoot things much wider. And also if you're not shooting 4K, things are just gonna drop in quality. Also shooting FPV mode makes it a lot more fun. But as you're flying around, I want you to just keep something in mind. And that is tip number three, which is to start wide and then get close. My advice when shooting these videos and to be efficient is to start with the wide orbit shot going either left or right, and then doing one going forwards and backwards. And if you do that for all quadrants of the car, that's enough shots to make a whole video. Also get low and add a bit of a tilt looking up. It makes the cars look bigger and more aggressive. And vice versa, if you look down, it makes them look smaller. However, once that's done, you can move closer into the car and try and find little details to record, whether it is a car badge, grills, maybe it has a nice spoiler, the fuses, the skirting, anything that makes the car unique will make your video unique. And if you do shoot the badge, then you can uh, check out my badge flip tutorial. But if you don't want to do that, let's talk about car positioning. Obviously, choose a nice location to film your cars. You can see in this one, we did it on top of a car park, which was cool, but inside the car park was even cooler because of the symmetry. Always look for symmetry. In fact, the best videos I've seen don't only have nice cars and transitions, but are also shot in nice locations. But within these locations, you want good car positioning. So speak to the driver or if it's yourself and experiment by moving things around with the car. By this I mean the angle that the car is at, the angle of the wheels, for example tires positioned towards the inside or the outside add more depth to the shot because it adds more shape to the car. And also the angle that the car is positioned can make a big difference. For example 20 to 30 degrees from the center makes the car look nicer. It just adds more depth to the shot. And if you can find a way to complement the depth of your environment, such as when we put these two cars next to each other, even better. And if you don't like it, change it. Bonus tip is to actually include in-camera transitions, which will allow you to whip out and whip into things. It will just make editing a breeze. Speaking of editing, my last and final tip is to choose whether you're going to shoot portrait or landscape beforehand. If you're shooting horizontal, you're gonna always be thinking about composing horizontally. It's very hard to have to always remind yourself to shoot wider. So you end up lying to yourself thinking, yeah, I'll have enough room to put this vertical. You won't. I realized this, but the first time I shot cars, I did it vertically. And you can see these videos are composed pretty, pretty decently. But when I shot it horizontally, knowing that I was going to put it in a vertical format as well, I don't know, maybe I suck, but it was hard for me to really get the shots properly in frame, which ends up with shots like this and like this and like Bruh. this. I mean, this is why the new DJI Mini 3 Pro has now a vertical mode. Anyways, if you want some project files and footage to edit, you can check out my Patreon below. Find out how I actually got into making car videos, but you can check out this video right here. With that being said, I'll see you in the next video.